What's up everybody? So today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know about the rollup field in Airtable. I'm gonna show you how to use it, when you should use a lookup, when you should use a count, when you should use a rollup, and how you can use the rollup as well. So if you're interested in that, keep watching the video. But if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and what we do is we help business owners probably just like you, help them optimize their information system. So that's in stuff like Airtable for say asset management, Asana for project management, Slack for communications, as well as Zapier and Integromat to really connect all those systems together. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. All right, so tossing on the glasses here. We are in the sales CRM. And if you've watched a few videos on the channel, you probably recognize this base, but this is a sales CRM. So in this, we track mainly five things. So we track opportunities. So this is like a new opportunity comes in with a client and this like has a value to it so like say this one is a in a proposal stage and you can see more details about each opportunity over here and each opportunity is linked to an account so you can see the accounts table is over here and within each account there's different contacts at the account and then with the contacts the contacts have interactions with a certain opportunity so or we have certain interactions with a contact about an opportunity. So that's what this interactions table is. Then this last table is tasks that we need to do for an opportunity. And that's whether it is a prospect opportunity, no matter what stage in this CRM it is, it can have, uh, it can have tasks attached to it that maybe we have to do before the next stage or to fulfill everything we need to for that client. So I'm going to be going through a few roll-up fields here and show you what those would look like for different tables in this sales CRM. And I'm going to, along the way, you're going to learn how to apply the roll-up field to maybe something in your use case, however you're structuring your database. The number one thing when you're doing roll-up fields is first, you need a linked field. So a linked field is something like this right here. You can see it kind of highlights all the cells in blue. And it is if you come up here and customize this field type, it is a link to all accounts. So this is a link to the accounts table. So for each opportunity, like I said before, there's just one account, but each account can have many opportunities. So within all of these, I'm not gonna get too much into relational databases, but there's different relationships between these tables. For example, some are one to one, some are one to many. For example, this one, one opportunity only has one account, but one account has many opportunities. So that's a one to many. And then there's also, there can be very complicated, a many to many relationship, but that's a situation where you would need like a junction table, but we won't get into that too much in this. But as you can see here for the accounts, some of these, so like one account has many opportunities. One account also can have many contacts. And so if we come back over to the opportunities, something we might want to think about in the opportunities is this table is linked to the interactions. So what summary data from the interactions, as well as what summary data from the tasks, because you can see the opportunities was really the hub of our CRM. So this is where we might want to be pulling in a lot of this information where we summarize the data from other tables. So. First, I'm gonna start off with the interactions. So what do we want to know about interactions? A few that I can think of off the bat are total interactions we've had, and maybe we can see between closed lost and closed one. Did we have more interactions with them? And then we can, as we get more and more of these opportunities siloed into like closed lost, closed one, qualification and such, we can see maybe how many interactions, if that has a play in whether someone gets one or lost. If you want to count the number of interactions, there's actually two ways you could do it. So you could use the roll up, but I would probably for this example, just use the count. So for this, we're going to count interactions. And for this, you'll just choose the interactions table. So you don't need to only include linked records from those that meet in certain conditions in this case. So we'll just go ahead and create this field. And so that's the first one. You could do that in the roll up, but if you're counting some, if you're counting the number of linked records, I would just go use the count field type. So now the next thing we might want to know is when was the latest interaction with somebody. So for this, what you are going to do is you're going to add a rollup field here. 
So if you scroll down, add a new roll up field, and we'll say latest interaction. So now, whichever field you want to find out the latest one, this is gonna be one where we have one opportunity is connected to many interactions. So we wanna be summarizing the data in the many, pulling that back to the one. So for this, we'll choose the interactions because that's where we have many records. And then the field that we wanna roll up is in fact that date. So whether it's the date and time two, date and time one, whichever date tells you whichever day that it happened, that's the one you wanna choose here. So I'll choose this one, we'll say that one is it. And for the function, what you wanna do is max. So if you take the max value, it's gonna take the highest date and it's going to return that here. And so now we can see, okay, now when was the last date for everything in all of these stages? And we can sort it by that kind of stuff as well. So if I add that date in here, if I add that latest interaction from one to nine, you can see that in here. That is the first roll up, the latest date. So this is really powerful in opportunities as well as in a client fulfillment sense. You can find what is the latest opportunity and then you can also pull in other information such as like what happened in that opportunity by using more linked fields and whatnot. So that is the summary for interactions. Now we might go to the interactions table and say, okay, is there anything else we want to be looking at in here? The only thing maybe might be this select, and that would be a case more so for the tasks, which I'll go into next. So in the tasks table, for each, it would it will help if I group this by the opportunity, since that's what we're talking about here. But you can see there's multiple tasks per opportunity. And so over here, we can see some of these are not started, some of these are in progress, but some of them are done. So I think a really helpful roll up that we can do is we want to count all of the tasks that are for each opportunity that are not done. And maybe we also want to summarize the max of those as well. So if we come back over to the, here to the opportunities, so we've already completed all the interactions, so we're done there. But now what we can do is we can add some fields on this tasks thing right here. So if we add a field to the right here of tasks and we scroll down and we use the count or we use the roll up. I'm gonna use the roll up in this one. And so for this, we will choose the tasks. And then the field we want to roll up is we want to roll up the, maybe the ID. The reason why I would use ID in this case is if we're going to count the number of tasks. So count tasks. If we count the number of tasks that only meet certain conditions. So like I said, this is similar to using the count, but you can do this in roll up. So I'll show you that now. So for this one, what you would, and it already just pulled it up here, but you would want to enter the count A. So what ID is going to give you, and you see right here it has like the one, two, and then the down. That means it is an auto number field. So an auto number field is computed. Similar to a formula field, it's going to be computed based on other cells. So that field is never going to be empty. So now if we use a formula called count A, it's going to count the number of non-empty values. And so if we do that right now, it will cover all of the fields that, or it will count all of these linked records that are not empty and every single record that exists is not going to be empty So with, with this field. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the selection to a certain number of linked records, not a certain number, but certain records that match condition. So if I come in here, what I will do is I will choose the status and make sure that it is not only one of these. So I wanna make sure that it's not done. So now if I create this field, we can come in here and we can see this one only has one task that is not done, but it has two tasks that are linked up. So if we come in here, we can see that task is in progress and we can see that task is done. So that works perfectly. But see here for these three tasks, that must mean that these three tasks, none of them are done. One of these ones must be done. None of these must be done. One of these must be done, none of these. So I think you get the point there, but what that is here to show you is that you can use similar, like you can use the count functionality, but using a roll up and still using those conditions. It's just however you wanna use it, you can. I like doing the roll up preferably, 
but the count also works just as well and you can add the same filters. So now what we might wanna do is if in the tasks, if we have a due date in here, so we don't have a due date, but we have a created date. So we will just pretend that this is the due date. So we'll switch this to due date and we'll switch this to a date field. So pretend this is the due date that you assigned for your tasks. And we will just come in here, create that due date, and we will go back to the opportunities table now. So instead of finding the max, instead of finding the highest due date, the one that's the furthest out, maybe I wanna know what's, what's the next due date that I have for this project, and then I can sort this whole table by that due date. If I come in here and I can insert another field to the right of these tasks, I can scroll down to roll up and I can say this is the next due date. And we want to come down here and we want to choose tasks. And then the field that we want to choose, we want to summarize is due date. And so for this, we will use min. But if you just set it up like this, like we just picked the linked record, we just picked due date. And now we said, what's the lowest due date? You're going to get the due dates for ones that are not, for the ones that are also considered done or completed. So again, in this case, you want to come in here and you want to filter it by on linked records that only meet certain conditions. So we want to add that same filter in here so where the status is not done. So now we can create that field. And if we take off this grouping, we can see the next due date and we can actually sort it by that as well so if i take off these i can sort it by the next due date which should be a field right around here so next due date is right there and if we choose that we can see for the tasks that do have due dates we can see what's the what's the next one and what's the latest one so now moving away from the opportunities table because we've already summarized a lot of the task data as well as a lot of the interaction data i hope that's really good for you now we're going to move to the accounts table so within the accounts table really the biggest one that i want to show off is one account may have many opportunities and if we come back over to the opportunities what you'll see is there's an estimated value for each opportunity so if we're in the contacts or if we're in the accounts table and we come right over here to the right of opportunity, we can see there's three just in this, for this ACE Poly team. So if I insert one to the right here, I wanna know what is the total account value so that maybe I can do some strategic prioritizing of my clients. So if I come in here and do the roll up, I can say this is gonna be the account value. And we can come down here, we can choose the opportunities for the linked record. And then the field that we want to be summarizing is we want to be summarizing that estimated value. And for this, we will just do sum. So for this, you could also include records that only meet certain conditions, for example, that are not closed lost because you only want like accounts you could or opportunities you could actually win. So maybe we'll include that as well. So where the status and this is, again, you don't have to have these filters in here, but I encourage you to if you want to make it a little bit more accurate so that you don't have opportunities coming in here that just don't meet the conditions that would actually contribute to this sum. So we wanna make sure it is not five close lost. So now we can create this field and we can see the different values. And now, again, in this case, we can sort it maybe based on that field. So I can sort it by the account value from top to bottom, and we can see that Ace Poly is actually our highest one. So that's the basics of using the rollup field in Airtable. Now, if you notice earlier, we were trying to group by a certain field and we wanted to sort it, but we couldn't do that sorting without really messing up the whole layout of our structure of our tables. So if you want to learn how to sort groups in Airtable, what I would do is I would go check, that, check out this end screen right here, and you can go learn how to sort groups in Airtable it's going to be a very easy tutorial you're going to know how by the end for many different field types such as linked records such as single flex and many others so i highly encourage you to go check out that and learn how to sort your groups within your air table so that would look something like this if you threw a group in here and you had the approval status or maybe that's not a good example and had the status in here you can sort these groups based on different things so go check that out and i'll see you there have a great day